Hi there. In this video, I want us to quickly look at the recent updates Affinity Serif made to their apps. And from my understanding, I noticed that most of these updates were all packed into the Affinity Publisher. A few of them in Affinity Photos, and then, of course, a couple of them in the Affinity Designer, okay? But in this video, I want us to really focus on Affinity Designer, which is, for the most part, what this channel talks about. And then, of course, Affinity Photo, because for the very first time, Affinity Serif included the very first AI feature or update into this application, okay? And for you to really enjoy these updates, you need to be operating the version 2 of the Affinity Serif app. Right. And if you must update this, if and if you are using the version two of the Affinity Serif app, then that means this update gets to you for free. It's either you're prompted or you just go on and manually, you know, update your app to reset reflect these recent features. Right. And the exciting updates here is that for the Affinity Photo, you know how there had been this free AI rave in town, in virtually all fields, and how some persons are of the school of thought that AI is the wrong move at a time like this. But however, I've always been with the school of thoughts that believes that AI is a tool in your hands and it can help improve your workflow and productivity. And that is why I'm excited to share this particular feature, okay? This AI feature that was included in the Affinity Photo application comes as an optional feature, which means upon updating your app, you are left, you are at liberty to choose whether you want to activate this feature or not, okay? But at the point where you decide to activate this feature, it is very, very important that you know that you have to download two AI models that work with these two features so that these would run for you smoothly, okay? And they made us to understand that these features or this AI features come pre-trained. So what that means in, in essence is one, you are not, they are not training the AI based on the activities you are doing, all right, on your system or on your laptop or your desktop. And secondly, they are not siphoning your data. So whatever you do with these AI models are right there on your desktop. Nobody's siphoning it, nobody's spying on you, and nobody's you know retrieving this data. And these exciting AI tools are the object selection tool and the select subject tool. Okay, we will do a deep dive into those tools. Uh, aside from that, from the affinity point of view, the, the new updates are just auto close, smoothness, style, color picker, which kind of cuts across all you know the application and some other improvements. So focusing on these two major applications. Affinity Photo, Affinity Designer, let's dive right in and actually see how these tools would work and help improve workflow. Let's go. So jumping into Affinity Designer, we'll quickly look, look at the auto close. And this is how that one, this is how that particular feature works. You come to this point here where you have the pencil tool. If you click on the pencil tool, at the top right here, you will see auto close. All right, auto close. So when this auto close is set to off, what I mean is I can literally draw, let me see if I can reduce this a bit and put it at 8.5 there. I can literally draw a circle and because it is off, by the time I try to link up the ends of the circle, nothing happens all right nothing happens that means i can't close this circle just by drawing them all right however when you set it to near when you set it to near you can draw the circle and as soon as the other end of the line comes close it automatically joins itself and closes the circle all right and then when you set it to far, okay, which me it means that at a certain distance, not close to the other end, it can actually, you know, join and close that circle. Okay. And then always means irrespective of how close or how far, it will always join the circle. 
All right. So these are the features. It can really come in handy when you don't really have the time to say you want to begin to, you know, find the other end of the circuit to join it. Just set it to what you want it part time and then draw your, your, your lines and then connect your lines automatically. Okay. So let's jump right into the second feature in affinity designer. So this is how smoothness works in Affinity Designer 2.6. The same pen tool, pencil tool, um, but this time around we are focusing on this part called smoothness. Okay. And ensure that stabilizer is unchecked. All right. And then what you need to do is take your pencil tool and you just draw. Now, if you notice, uh, my smoothness is on at zero percent. Okay, so if I increase my smoothness to hundred percent, you see how it has smoothened out the notes. It has smoothened out the notes, and then subsequently, if I draw any other line, you will realize that it will come out smooth. Unlike when um, I, I reduce the smoothness to say zero percent. Okay, that's very straightforward. And the next on the line would be styles. Styles. Okay, for style, click on your pencil tool. Um, you know, here in the context toolbar where we've been talking about auto close smoothness, okay? Um, this time around, we're looking at this particular part here called style. And what this does is it kind of help you to indicate whether you want to um, use an outline or fill uh fill an outline so to speak okay and whatever it is that happens there is dependent upon the settings you have in your um, color tab or color panel and at the same time what settings you have for your stroke so let me give you an example so imagine a situation where as it is now it has been set to use line style so if i try to draw a circle at the moment Okay, um, as you can see, it is not closed, obviously. And now with this particular new feature, you can now click on this part that says use fill. Okay. And if I click on that part, use fill, what now happens is it fills up that space. All right. And I can decide to remove the outline, the line style, and we'll still have this. Okay, or we can decide to put it and still have this. We can decide to leave it, or we can decide to, you know, not keep it selected such that by the time we leave the space and come back, it will not be selected. But I know for the kind of design we'll probably be doing, we'll probably want to leave it, you know, keep it selected. And you can now come here and still change what you feel the feel color looks like. And you can also come here and change what you think the um, outline would look like. So pretty much that's just the simple um, feature that was included into um, Affinity Designer in the context uh, toolbar area. So let's move on to the next feature in the oh, 2.6 update. The next on the line is the Node 2. A couple of updates with the Node 2. So here, this is how this works. Um, let's assume I click on my pen tool and, and um, of course my smoothness is at 0% and I decided to do something like this. Okay, and then of course, let me do this. Now with the node tool, I can now double click on any of these lines and it will convert them to sharp edge double click convert to sharp edge double click convert to sharp edge double click convert to sharp edge you can see that right double click convert to sharp edge and um, let me see another one that has that feel okay, another one uh, that pretty much what is new with this you double click you turn it back to this you can you can double click on these handles and still turn it back to you know sharp edge the same thing with this so that's just the feature with the with the node 2 nothing too serious okay so usually i think you click on alt 
and then you click on the node for it to work that way but now it's something you can now do just by clicking double clicking on the particular node you you plan to either make sharp um, node or a smooth node so that's that for the updates on the node 2 in version 2.6 okay, the next on the line is auto apply picked colors in the uh, in affinity designer version 2.6 and what's new here is i can now automatically you know select color without necessarily coming to the color panel to pick my colors okay so if i click on the color picker tool here okay and i come to this point and i click on this color automatically it will pick that color that is how it works all right that is how it works and if i want to pick this other one i come here i pick choose my color picker tool i click this color and it automatically reflects so that's what um, the auto apply pick color feature looks like in the update in version 2.6 affinity designer so next on the line is uh, the ability to be able to search for brushes okay you know how this works you for for you to be able to assess the brush to in affinity designer you have to come to the pixel persona here the pixel persona here this is the um, what's it called this is the designer persona then this is the pixel persona when you come to the pixel persona the tools here will display the brush tool right and if it displays the brush tool you can now come to the brush menu here um on this right hand side by uh, on my screen and you can literally search for the kind of brush you want to take for instance we're looking for a grainy brush if i type grainy it brings out that grainy brush okay and i can now apply okay yeah so i can now apply i can now apply the grainy brush i can decide that i want something a bit different let me see if i can pull something else up then I can click on this and um, okay. So that's that's about the search brushes feature in um, Affinity Designer version 2.6. Also, if you have your let's say for instance you have your you have your you know line in this way okay and you plan to what's it called you plan to change you 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 look for the brush for instance you we search for oil okay oils and um sorry and this set of brushes came up so if i just want to apply these brushes directly onto the line that i have created all i needed to do is just click on those brushes and it just keeps changing to the selected brush okay so that is um one of the new features in affinity designer um, 2.6 okay right now i will we'll have to we'll go to affinity photos and I've done a couple of test runs before now just to see how some of these things would look like. So I'm just going to close some of the um, test runs I've done earlier um, so that we can all, you know, experience this all over again. So I'm going to open, I'm going to open Affinity Photo from scratch. Yeah, this is me opening Affinity Photo from scratch and I'm going to look for the pictures we need to bring in so what i had done earlier was i searched for um okay let me say man running in the woods let's see what we have okay and as much as possible i'm trying to see if i can pick images that has a lot of interferences and what that means is to see if there are images whose surrounding elements can interfere with identifying which is the main image there right this is just to test the ai model 
that um, affinity serif have actually introduced into um, the affinity photo 2.6 so we would pick from let me pick from this okay, this this is a privilege um, uh, okay let's let's pick this let's pick this picture of the kit okay so no copy image that will come to affinity photos and then we'll paste from clipboard all right this is what we have here picture of a beautiful young um, kid right in the woods and we want to see and as you can see we have other images elements within the in the woods that are in focus here but this is all just trying out the, the AI models, the AI tools, which is the subject select and the object select tool within Affinity for those. And um, the first thing we want to try out is the subject select. Let's see how Affinity Photos using this AI model will be able to identify the subject in the foreground in this picture. Amazing. Uh, but I wouldn't say it did an excellent job. I wouldn't say it did an excellent job, but what this actually meant is from here, you can pretty much, you know, finish up the work, right? By selecting other areas that have not been selected. I think this, this didn't do an amazing job in my opinion, okay? Now let's, let's try with, um, the object select, object select, or says the object select, you come to this particular tool here object selection tool this tool that has the that has the shape of the head of an owl you click on it and you can pretty much tap what you want i feel this does a, a better job compared to the subject select and i feel the subject that would make more sense when the object in question is at the foreground right so it's easier to isolate such objects and but in this case the 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 object selection tool, which is what I just did now, would mean when you have other interfering objects around the main element you want to select, so you can target the subject or you can tap target the element or the object you, you need. That's like I've done, and you can, you know, you can complete that action. And let's say I want to pick those woods alongside these trees alongside the object I've selected all we need to do is two days and that and voila we've picked it right so this is how this AI model works for affinity photos and like they have rightly said none of these activities are recorded or are, are sent back to them as feedback or are used to train the AI models no the AI models come pre-trained pre right and everything you do at their resident in your laptop on your system it's not leaving your system the information is not going back to serif all right so that's that with affinity 2.6 and the ai model they introduced if you stayed with me till this point i want to say thank you i hope you find this very very helpful please click on the not notification bell click like subscribe and go to the comment section and comment what you think about this video and the recent updates in the affinity 2.6 series uh until next time